Hey guys, it's Amanda, also known as Amber Cherries, and today joining me is my husband, Zachary. He's also my caregiver, and he's going to be helping me discuss tips and tricks on the relationships of BPD. Now, I got a lot of this information from Katie Morton on YouTube, and the reason why for that is we're still struggling with our uh, relationship when it comes to BPD. And it's hard, and a lot of these tips make a lot of sense to us because some of them we've used and it made sense. So we're going to help uh, you with some of these from her channel, but from an actual relationship that suffers from BPD. I have schizoaffective depressed type borderline personality disorder. We're going to go down a list of uh, what I wrote down for notes and we're going to tell you from my point of view and from his point of view, from him who has been experiencing BPD with his wife and me from experiencing BPD as a person and in a relationship with a person who does not have BPD. First thing on our list is educate yourself on borderline personality disorder. It is so important that you educate yourself with any disorder when you're in a relationship or a family friend or a friend in general, so then you know what to do if an episode were to occur. You know how to handle it, what to expect what to expect, um, know a little bit about them on a personal level, yeah. understand what they're going through without even if they don't have episodes. So if you see little ticks here and there, you know how to respond to it. Um, another thing about too is that when we say these things, I wanna let you know is like, it may seem difficult or it may seem easy depending on your out point, but uh, it's okay if you make a mistake. You just gotta fix it immediately. Okay, just know that. From a person who has BPD or schizoaffective also, it is important that you educate yourself on your own disorder as well so you know how to handle it when it does come around. You know what's going on with yourself, um, how to manage it, how to keep yourself as relatively calm as possible knowing that you do have these disorders. And so it's important that you also educate yourself as a person from who has it. Just because you have it doesn't mean you know everything about it. You don't know how to handle it. It doesn't make sense if you just don't learn about it. You have to learn about what you have. Next is a stress-free environment. Get out of here. <laughs> this is one we struggle with. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of times where he comes home from being stressful from work and everything like that, and he brings it home from work, and then it makes it stressful here, and then I get into an episode, and then he doesn't know how to handle it because he's still stressed from work. <laughs> I'll say this. I got a new job, and I haven't been stressed at work. This is where um, something else comes in, is unpredictability. Okay, if you change someone's environment to an unpredictable environment, which is what happened, you know, it's like I went from a seven to four job to a 12 to whenever the job is done job. Um, the unpredictability that she wasn't ready for caused episodes. So coming home from work after a long day to that is gonna be hard on you, but you need to, if you are on the receiving end of doing the hard work, coming home to someone with borderline, you need to keep that in mind. They can't control it because now everything's different. And it's not just borderline. It's for schizophrenia. It's for schizoaffective. It's for bipolar, severe depression. Anything that is stressful can cause these disorders to act up. And it's don't know the science of it or why, but it does. It causes it just to inflare. And then they can't control the episodes that are occurring because sometimes they don't even know they're stressed and sometimes you don't know you're stressed until all of a sudden you know stuff is just going down on you and you just can't handle it you don't know why and then you realize well i was pretty stressed at work yesterday that could explain why you know everything is just crashing at the moment yeah and why i'm taking it out on everyone else or taking it out on myself etc but it is important that you try to come home if you're a person who works and you're a caregiver or your family friend or a family member to come home and just make it as stress-free as possible not just for the person who has the disorder but for yourself I mean you don't deserve to go through stress no one deserves to go through stress even for a person who doesn't have disorders stress can cause you some severe issues like health mental health um, physical it's just a whole bunch of things that you don't need to be going through so just like let out all that stress when you get home and just realize you're home you're safe, you're comfortable, you have things you can do that will make you happy, and just let it all go. Yeah, and another way to kind of help 
prepare that, give them a heads up. If you call them or send them a message saying, hey, I'm not coming home at this time, it's giving them something predictable. Yes. Okay, so you're going to come home more comfortable and not having to worry about walking on eggshells if you just give them a heads up. And for you out there who are like, well, I don't need to do that, you know, I'm an adult, get the f over it. <laughs> okay? I can't even say the word, but you know what I meant. Okay, he's like, we may be adults, but be the more mature one and just call ahead. It's courteous anyways. It is really nice when he calls ahead or just calls throughout the day. It makes me very happy. It makes me know that he's okay, that I'm okay, that everything's okay, that he loves me and everything like that. Because pers people with BPD, they suffer from severe abandonment, separation. And they suffer from that. I suffer from it really badly. Like, when he's away from me, I start freaking out for a long time depending on how long it is or if he hasn't messaged me or not. 90% of the time it jumps between to depression and paranoia. I mean luckily with this new job she can see what I'm doing. Not like physically see me but she can see if I'm on the clock. Yeah. So she's like where were you at this time? And it's like I was at I work. don't even need to ask him if I really feel that paranoia to do so which I haven't. But it's nice to know in the back of my head, if I start acting up and I start thinking these dark thoughts, I can at least go back on this and reassure myself without calling him and yelling at him for no reason at all, which can happen with people with BPD. Our temperament goes up quick and it goes up strong and it's unstable. So yeah. it's nice when I receive calls from him, even if he's checking in on me, because it's telling me that everything is okay, he still loves me. Um, he's not going to abandon me. He's not going to separate himself from me. And it's great. Yep, like, he doesn't always do it, but it, when he does, it makes me very happy. Yeah, I mean, like, don't get me wrong. I get we all have jobs to do, and we all can't, like, stay on the phone. But you not calling at all, ever, that's not a, that's not a, that's not a reason. You can, you can still message them. You can send them a quick Snapchat. That way they can physically see you. They can hear the tone in your voice. A message sometimes can be deceiving or misread or misinterpreted. I hate text messages because of that. So I would rather you just do Snapchat because it's just, it's faster so you're not sitting there, da -da 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 -da. what are you doing on your phone? Okay, you know, it's like you ain't got to worry about that. Snapchat will get your message faster. Here's something I'm adding in during episodes of BPD. When you are in an episode of BPD and you're arguing back, that's something you don't want to do. Don't argue back with a person who is having a BPD episode, especially do not bring up a topic that you don't like that they're doing like if he's upset with me about something don't bring it up during the time that I'm having an episode because that can make the episode just explode into something else yeah and I'll add something onto that is like and once they are out of the episode do not bring it up immediately after give it some cooling time yeah cuz you're, some... you're gonna kick it right back in at least with this one that happens and <laughs> Man. I love you too, honey. <laughs> uh, sometimes when you, you know, you got what you need to say on your mind and you can finally say it, but it's not the right time. Yeah, I'm that guy who doesn't do it at the right time. Yeah. Well, Chris, which, this goes to the next topic, which is talk simply, as Katie Morton puts it, at a time that is most calm. So when the, she means like by that, she means like, when he is something is bothering him, he can say, hey, I need to talk to you about something. This is no way to upset you or make you feel attacked or anything, but this has been bothering me and you've been doing it a lot lately and I would like for you to stop if that is okay. Do it calmly and do it rationally, but do it in a way that doesn't sound like you're coming at them at the same time. Like, he doesn't do that that often unless we are in an argument. Yeah, like, that comes out in an argument. And <laughs> like I said, I got terrible timing. <laughs> he, he has terrible, terrible timing. That's why we I had to look it up because I was like, you know, how do we handle a relationship with BBD? Because we have our issues too. We are still struggling with it. And a lot of these, we actually didn't know when we started using it recently and it started, it started to make sense. Like, okay, yeah. this does work. Yeah, and, and guys, when we, we're talking about this, don't get me wrong, every relationship is going to have its arguments. It's okay to argue. You just yes. need to control the episodes, okay? So they get it. A relationship without arguments is not a real relationship. I'm taking su suicide or self-injury threats seriously. So if I were to say to him right now, hey, I've been thinking about 
hurting myself lately. Don't just push it off to the side saying, well, she's probably just saying this to get attention. She says it so often. Maybe that's because I've been thinking about it so often I'm trying to give you the red flag or my mind is trying to give you the red flag that something's going on with me right now and it's an, an uncomfortable situation and I would like to seek help and that could be me trying to seek help. Yeah, um, to do this, the best way to approach it is to immediately ask him, what do you think is causing it? Like, what's been going through your mind to make you want to hurt yourself? Sometimes she doesn't even know. Yeah. You know, sometimes there isn't a reason and sometimes it's the way it's going to be. So the only thing you can do is be comforting, let them know that you're there for them, is like if there's anything that they figure out that they need to talk to you about, it's like let them feel comfortable enough to open up to you. Whether it's going to start an argument or not, they need to be able to talk to you. I don't care if we get into arguments because it's going to help us grow, you know, it's not going to separate us because no matter how, what the argument about what it is, it's like I'm still going to lower the same afterwards. I'm not afraid to bring up anything to her and I want her to feel the same way, whether it's going to bring up an argument or not. So she can talk to me about anything. And if you're unsure what to do during a situation where they're saying they're going to commit suicide or they're in the process of trying to do it, your next best bet is calling for help. Calling the police, calling the doctor, or calling their psychiatrist, or even calling the suicide hotline. Because some things you can't do. There's just nothing you can do. You have to call for help. And it's just sometimes it's a risky run I have to take. Encourage therapy. Yeah, um, but luckily for most borderline people who have these issues, especially me, we don't like feeling the way that we do, so normally we want to go and seek help anyways, but people with schizophrenia and schizoaffective disorder is kind of the opposite. They don't want to seek help. Do I have a reasoning why they don't want to seek help? No, I don't know why I didn't want to seek help at first either. I just didn't want to seek help. I didn't know why I didn't want to seek it. I just didn't trust people, I guess to handle my situation and it's not because of the medication it's just because i just didn't trust anyone to help me but you didn't think there was anyone that was able to help you but encouraging therapy is very important especially for bpd because there are therapies that can help us learn to control our bpd and get us on a regulated self self not self image but regulated self and you have more appreciation for yourself well, not just that, but we can learn to control the issue, is what I'm trying to say. We can almost be cured. Not really cured, but almost be cured. Because we're learning the um, proper ways to handle our episodes and our BPD in general, as a whole thing. Yeah. And again, there are going to be episodes. Yes. Okay, you're never going to prevent episodes 100% of the time. I mean, it might even come down to where you're going to have to take medication. I have to take medication for my issues, both schizoaffective and for my BPD. Yep. And um, has it helped? Yes, it's helped significantly. Like, I used to have episodes almost every single day for the stupidest reasons. And now I'm not really having those issues that much, especially since I've gone up in medication. I've kind of been... Yeah. going down with the calmness lately. Yeah, and for those of you who are fairly young going through these issues, who have yet to learn a lot of things, I'm still fairly young too, so is my wife, we are still very ignorant to how relationships continue to grow, just like people our age and younger are. It takes a maturity level, because even with without people who have these mental issues is like that you guys are going to get into arguments over the most trivial things let alone someone who has bpd so being in a relationship like that you need to try to be as mature as possible healthy boundaries now me and him both don't really know what to say about this because he doesn't give me any boundaries i don't give her any boundaries she gives me every boundary <laughs> Trying. They say healthy boundaries is good, and I can kind of see it because you're giving them like, like a routine almost, something they can expect. It's to, not a routine. It's to just, follow. It's guidelines. Don't break Gui these rules. Find guidelines to follow so they know where to not go, where to go, and it helps kind of keep them on a straight level. Yeah, it, ladies, if your if your man goes to the strip club before you got with them, and all of a sudden you guys are together and you don't want to go to a strip club, that's a boundary. That's a healthy boundary. <laughs> Okay, that's fine. I, I don't I don't argue that. But you telling me this man can't occasionally hang out with his friends? This is for people without BPD and schizophrenia, by the way. Schizoaffective. Like, at all? He can't hang out with them at all? That's not a boundary. That's you being too clingy. 
Like, my wife needs me more often than not, and she needs me to be around. And he's allowed to hang out with friends. Now, oh. back in the beginning of the relationship, I had a severe separation problem. Yeah, but she that's had because abandonment issues. I, well, I still have abandonment issues. But that's because I've dated a lot of people, and a, most of them cheated on me or abandoned me. And be, every time I got into a new relationship, that would become a problem with me after a, after a time period of a while, because I got used to it. And now he's now he's allowed to go out and everything because now I trust him enough to go out and stuff like that. And I know the people. I'm really close to his friends and everything. I've gotten acquainted with them. I'm acquainted to their wife. <laughs> so, the wife. The wife. So if if stuff really goes Josie, down, we're I'm going to go Josie. after it's them. It's like you are now known as the wife. The wife, and not just like the <laughs> wife. She's like, the wife. Yeah, and like you're 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 in the YouTube community now. You're the wife. <laughs> <laughs> I love Josie. <laughs> She'll probably be like, eh. <laughs> oh, sweet. <laughs> now, lastly, is calling their bluff. I beg to differ on this one, but Zach's like, I like this one a lot. I, I like this one. <laughs> I like this one. And it doesn't mean like you coming up to them, especially during an episode or not in an episode, and saying, well, I just don't like this about you right now because you're so-and-so reasons. Yeah. Or it's about like if they're coming at you saying, I, I expected you that you were cheating on me at so-and-so hours of the day because of this reason. Defend yourself is what the call your bluff thing is really saying, okay? It's like if you're, if you're being accused of doing something, don't be afraid to beat around, you know. Beat around be, the bush. Be, no. <laughs> I was going to say, be kind about it, but say it's like, I wasn't doing any of those things. Yeah, it goes it's back like, to stand, the... Stand your ground on that. It goes okay? back to the stress yeah. part. You gotta remain calm. Like, no, that's not what I did. Here's proof. Yeah, and um, it's like, and, you know, he, and don't get me wrong, even if there isn't proof to help that, it's like, it's something that they have to learn to suck up because there isn't any proof of theirs and there isn't any proof of yours, but you're obviously still telling the truth. You can't buckle under things that you haven't done to appease them because it's yeah. only going to make things worse in the long run. Because if you appease them, okay, they may be calm now, but now they think you're doing stuff in the back of their head because you admitted to doing something that you weren't doing. Okay, it's like, don't do that. All right, so that's basically it for that. I mean, we followed Katie Morton's, what she said in her video. She's a family therapist, by the way, and a regular therapist, I think, just in the general therapist whatever now we've told her you about our side of the view of actually being in a relationship of someone with bpd and me being actually bpd so i hope you guys enjoyed this video like comment and subscribe and bye